Today's video is sponsored by sellcashier.com where they compare iPhone prices on the internet and then give you a quick quote and the most cash for your iPhone. It's simple, fast, and secure. What is going on guys, Joel here. And I'm back with part two of top tweaks that are compatible with iOS 8.1.2. Now, if you didn't check out part one, go ahead and do so. Uh, those are gonna be some of the tweaks that I am actually running on my device currently. And this is gonna be basically a part two version with the rest of the tweaks that you probably saw in part one that I did not cover. So we're gonna continue that. So these are gonna be some of the tweaks that I run currently or that I've came across and wanted to show you guys. So to begin, we're gonna start off with a tweak called My Reachability. Now with the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, uh, they have a new feature called Reachability where you double tap the home button and then it pulls down the whole screen so that way you can have easier access to different things on the screen because it is a larger device. Now with My Reachability, you're actually gonna be able to use this on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Simply what it does, it gives you easier access to different corners. So for example, as you see here, it actually brings it down to a side of the application. So that way you'll be able to reach over and select a setting or something on that certain application that you wouldn't be able to reach by simply using reachability. And it has two buttons on the side. One's gonna be a little lock. And then below that, you'll be able to simply tap on it so it can switch left to right. Uh, depending what side of the screen you want to select or what side of the app you want to select. Now if you go ahead and tap on the lock button, it'll actually unlock it. And what that does with my reachability, it uses the accelerometer that will allow you to simply tilt your device and then the app will go to that corner of which way you're tilting it. So as you see here, I can sort of demo it. It's kind of hard to kind of show you, but you'll be able to simply tilt it and then you see the actual application. Uh, go to that corner. So depending if you need to select something on the top of the app or at the bottom of the app, you can use the accelerometer. That way you'll be able to use it one-handed and then be able to access those different settings or whatever you need to press on that application, whether it be in on the top left, bottom left, or bottom right corner. Now you probably saw something pop up whenever I disconnected the device on the last tweak, and that is actually a tweak called Predix. And this is a very cool tweak. It's a very useful tweak. And it basically shows you how much battery is left until it dies or how much time is left until it fully charges. Now you can enable different activator actions to enable Predix. I actually have it set so I can tap on the status bar on the battery icon and then it'll pop up. And also I have it so when I disconnect or connect my device to a power source, it'll go ahead and enable Predix and it'll show how much battery is left to either charge or how much battery is left for it to die when I disconnect it from a charger. So going to the settings, we do have a little bit of settings here. You can uh, tweak, you can go ahead and enable it or change different activator actions. As I mentioned, I have it so when it disconnects or connects to a power source, it'll pop up and let you know how much time is left for it to die or left for it to charge, which is pretty handy. You can also even change the color of it if you don't like the color. Uh, so you see here you have a variety of colors to choose from and then uh, you simply go ahead and open up Predix or enable Predix again and you see there the change comes to effect. So again that is Predix. It basically allows you to see how much time is left for your battery to die or how much time is left for it to fully charge. Next up is a tweak that you guys were asking about on part one of this video and that is Apex 2. Now what this tweak allows you to do is basically organize your applications in an easier or better manner, I would say. By simply swiping down on an icon, you will notice that I have different apps. So I can swipe down or up, depending what setting you leave it on. Uh, but if I slide down, you see that on my music application or on Spotify, I have more music applications on it. Now I also have that on my app store and I have Cydia basically hidden behind it. Now it's very easy to do this. So for example, I have Instagram here, I can swipe down. I don't have any application set on this yet, so you will see four different plus icons or plus buttons on there because it allows you to add up to four applications. So simply tap on a plus icon and then you'll be able to add any application that you have on your device. Now there is a few settings that you can change. You can change it, for example, uh, instead of swiping up, you can just swipe down or vice versa, or I have enabled to both either up or down, then I'll be able to enable Apex. But again, guys, that is Apex 2. Next up is called Power Tap, and I think this is also a useful tweak, and it simply allows you to toggle the power down bar through different settings, such as Reboot, Respring, and Safe Mode. 
So all you got to do is how you normally turn off your device. You hold down the power button for a few seconds. Now with a simple tap on the knob, you'll be able to toggle through the different modes, which is going to be respringing uh, or simply reboot or just put it into safe mode. Me being a jailbreaker, I sometimes will want to respring my device. So this is kind of like a good natural looking way of doing this. So instead of powering off or if I want to reboot my device for some reason, I can do so with power tap. I think it's very useful and there is some settings that you can change in your settings application for power tap. You can go ahead and disable the different modes and you can also change the text, but that is power tap. I think it's very useful and a natural way of doing these different modes. Next up is send delay and by the name of it, you probably already guessed what it does. It delays your text messages when you're sending a text message. Uh, so this is very useful whenever you make mistakes. If you often make mistakes or uh, or you want to quickly change something, you can quickly cancel that text message uh, because I know sometimes we send those text messages that we may have hit send by accident or anything like that. You can go ahead and cancel it. So as you see here, I can go ahead and send a text message. And as you'll notice, the send button turns into stop. So you can go ahead and hit stop and then it will stop the text message. Now there is one little setting that you can change and that is to delay it longer or to have a shorter time of a delay. Now this next tweak is another one that I like using quite a bit and it's called BioProtect. So it simply allows you to protect your applications from other users by using Touch ID. Now this is not only for Touch ID devices. If you don't have a Touch ID device, you can still use BioProtect. Uh, by using a passcode, but I like using devices that do have Touch ID because it makes it a lot easier. So you see here, I can go ahead and put in my fingerprint and then it opens up the application. Now you do have some settings that you can tweak. Uh, so you see here, you have all these settings, but another useful thing is called the protected Wi-Fi. So if you are in a trusted Wi-Fi uh, place, so for example, your house, and you don't want to always have to go ahead and put in your fingerprint when you're trying to open a certain application that you have locked, you can go ahead and select your home Wi-Fi network and that way it'll disable BioProtect every time you're connected to that certain network. So again, that is called BioProtect. It's very useful, especially when you want to lock those applications from certain people. Next up is a tweak I've covered in the past and it's called Swipe Selection. Now, Swipe Selection is very simple and it works with your default iOS keyboard. So if you hate uh, having to go ahead and scroll through your different texts when you want to edit something, maybe in a long paragraph, you can simply slide your finger left or right on your keyboard and then it'll go ahead and move that cursor to wherever you need to make that adjustment. So that is basically swipe selection. That's all it does. Uh, there is also another little feature on it where you can hold down the shift key or the cap locks key, I should say, and then swipe left and right and then it'll highlight the text. That way you can delete text or something like that, make some tweaks on it. So that is swipe selection and you'll be able to use your keyboard to move your cursor around. Now before we do head out, let's go ahead and take a quick look at our sponsor for this video, which is sellcashier.com. So if you're new to sellcashier, it's a simple website who actually purchases iPhones from all major US carriers and currently only operates in the US. It's a simple and fast way to get a quote and ship your iPhone out and then get paid for that iPhone. So the process is very simple. All you gotta do is go over to sellcashier.com. You select a model of your iPhone and then go ahead and select the carrier of that iPhone and then choose the storage size of it. Go ahead and choose the condition of it as well and then you'll get a quote and then simply you just add it to your cart. You fill out the information that it's provided and then from there you'll be able to select the shipping option which Cell Cashier actually will send you out a prepaid label in a box for free if you wanted. Uh, which is something I'd recommend. And then you can select whether you want to get a check for your iPhone or send a payment directly to your PayPal account, which is gonna be the quickest way. So Cell Cashier is a very quick way to get a quote for your iPhone, ship it out, and then get paid. Now this last tweak, you actually have to add a repo because it can't be found straight on Cydia's uh, default repos. Uh, I'll leave a link down below for that repo, but we'll actually walk through that here in a second of how to add it and what to add. Uh, but what it is, it's called type status, and this is what I've been using in the past iOS jailbreaks, and it's also available on iOS 8. So as you see here, you've probably seen it in previous videos as well, where you can see a little icon on the top right, and it's a little typing bubble. So when you are receiving a text message from someone with an iOS device using iMessage, 
you'll be able to see if they're typing. So that way, if you are in an application doing other things, you can kind of get an idea if someone is texting back. So I think it's a cool little tweak. Uh, you can also get read receipts uh, if they have those enabled. Uh, you would simply get a little check mark up top. But but yeah, that is type status. And the way to install this application, and the way to add, bleh, and the way to install this tweak is you have to go ahead and open up Cydia, go into your repo section, which is going to be under the sources section. From there, go up top and hit edit on the top right, and then hit add on the top left. And then we'll add this repo as shown here, which is going to be Cydia.hbang.ws. And then you'll hit add source. And once it's added, uh, you'll go back into it and tap into the hbang repo. And then you'll go down and then look for type status and then install that. And then once you do that, you'll have type status on your device. But anyways, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for top iOS 8.1.2 compatible tweaks. If you do want to see more, and if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and hit that like button to let me know. And if you're not yet following me on social media like Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, or Instagram, uh, all of my links are down below in the description. So go ahead and follow me for the latest updates and all that good stuff. And if you feel like being awesome, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. But anyways, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you all on the next one. Alright? Peace.